All right, so this is a video about my art, my paintings, my sculpture, and I want to get into a number of different studios, including Los Angeles, Boston, Austin, Atlanta, uh, Jackson Hole, Bozeman, Montana, Santa Barbara, and uh, a couple other places. I'm going to put up some lists. I'm also going to be putting up pictures of each of these individual pieces. You can check them out online. I would love to talk to you about your studio. Uh, hopefully you get something going. But these are different genres of art that I've kind of assembled and the only room that was big enough in order to be able to house this much art um, and these many paintings was the master bedroom at the house that I built. Now this is actually like my writing studio and I built like the whole house, not just the one spot. That's actually not my own painting. I was one of my first big purchases. It's a portrait of Jack Kerouac actually, or Kerouac. And um, I was mesmerized by the painting itself before I actually purchased it. But that's another story that's a different artist. Right now, I want to talk about my art, what it means to me, and hopefully uh, maybe it can convey something to you and that you'll want to purchase some of my art. That's the bottom line. <laughs> anyway, this is the Hemingway Master Suite in the master bedroom in uh, Montana. And I wanted to go ahead and do something very different, kind of kitschy. So like one room's a bunkhouse and one room's a George O'Keefe. We did one room that's specifically for M.C. Escher. Um, we did a Lewis and Clark library. There's very different themes, but all trying to relate back to either something that was inspiring to me or inspiring uh, relative to Montana. So this is the Hemingway, and you guys see it's, it's very big. And we're going to be doing a video that will be specifically about the house. I did design and build the house. But this is what we're talking about right now. And this is one of the paintings. Now this is uh, all the concept is based off of mating rights and rip two male lions ripping each other apart for the right to mate. It's all about fucking and fighting and getting the opportunity to screw in the first place. And I just wanted something that was just erratic and I actually got naked and I was in the garage just whiskey drunk, blaring music, just running at the board, just swinging paint at it and uh, flinging. I knew that somebody was going to show up while I was painting this piece. And when well, I was butt naked, whiskey drunk in the garage. And uh, sure enough, one of my friends did show up. And I showed up at the door. I did put pants on before I answered it. But um, I put the pants on. And, <laughs> and then I showed up when I was working on it. At the time, it just looked like a bunch of paint just drizzling down. But that's one of the things I actually do is I work on layers. And so you'll actually lay the painting down flat. And you'll have to do all of your work so you can get like detailed fading lines in there. But then... You work on the next layer, and if you look closely, real closely, there's layers of brush strokes, and there's layers of splatter, then there's a layer of splatter, then there's brush strokes and brush strokes. And so this actually takes layers upon layers upon layers upon layers in order to be able to achieve these kinds of results. And what you get in the end is very beautiful, and it really kind of takes you in, and it gives you a number of different depths and levels. It's just something that I've been trying to incorporate into my art. Also textures, and also really breaking free of like the bounds of what is supposed to be wildlife. I, I, I was, I try, I want to do wildlife, but I can't do still wildlife. I want to do wildlife my way. What is real nature? And I think real nature is two lions ripping each other apart for the opportunity to mate. Uh, so, uh, but then down here, we also have something else. Now, this is actually something that I've incorporated into a few things, and you'll see repetitions in my art a lot. Um, the, these actual patterns right here are actually the, the, the tattoo patterns on my fingers as well. And it's supposed to represent reaching in and touching the void of, of death, uh, or the beyond, or the bringer of destruction, and what would death look like. And in my interpretation, visually, um, death would be bright and colorful and it'd be full of flames. Um, I love the way that fire uh, just is released from an object and the way that you can take any object, even people or be it logs or wood, you know, or paper, and then when it's set to fire, it releases that energy and it all bursts out of them. You can feel like that energy was locked in that, that log or that tree stump all along and it's ex just exuberant life just whoo, flooding out, but um, that's the moment of death, and so that's how it incorporates into this whole painting. Um, I built a frame, did some kind of like tie kind of clouds, you can't see it right there, 
but you can see it over here a little bit better. And then it's gilded with gold paint. It's low light right now, it's nighttime. But um, that's the first of many paintings. Um, I, I didn't bother titling it. I mean, what do you want to call it? Two lions trying to fuck? <laughs> Fighting to fuck? Something like that. Okay, this is something very different. Now, not necessarily very different, but this is called the burden of vision. And what it, it's symbolic of is there's supposed to be a black border. I'm building the frame right now. But a man contained in a very intense, a, very, a square. He's contained and bound by himself and the thrashing energy spinning around. And there's lots of textures and layers, again, in my, in my art. Like, you'd be surprised, like up here, this was inks. And you had to let the ink drift and you had to hold the painting and like let it move in the ways you wanted to. And you had to I'd get on there and I breathe and I splatter and I push and I move the ink. And the idea is, is that I'm showing control of my art with all of the different patterns, the layers, and really getting those smooth textures. This took me days and weeks and a month just to be able to get the structure behind it. And then I'll go through and I'll just rip it apart. And I think it takes a huge amount of courage to take a beautiful painting that you've just finished. God, I've worked so hard on this. And then you take a black line and whoa, just chop it right through the middle. But at the same time, it's conveying that strong emotion and sensation of just chopping through it. And there's no other way in order to be able to get a hold of your art except to actually scream and yell and uh, throw the paint at the, at the painting, which is usually what I do. <laughs> So, um, it turns out that I'm actually more talented, and again, there's lots more to this. Um, when I use black in my paintings, it's usually symbolic of death, and this one you can kind of see it kind of creeping in, and so his hands are touching that, again, these are concepts of death that I repeat throughout my paintings. It's usually uh, invoked in black ink that I like to be able to spread throughout. Um, it's kind of a... Uh, uh, it, it, it's erratic, it's uncontrollable, and it's creeping in, and it's unknown, and it's unrecognizable. It's, it's not a format that you can see, but it's an idea that's always elusive and encroaching upon us. But this is all about trying to grasp an idea and then bring it into existence. Very big painting, too. So, um, I don't know if you can see how tall, like, I mean, it's, I'm right here. It's a huge painting. It's big, so... I can't even fit it all on the camera. Some smaller pieces. Um, this is actually, this is based off of um, uh, a book that I'm, uh, it's a character. It's called The Tragic True Loves of Blackheart the Sea Wolf. <laughs> Long title, good story. Um, but this is symbolic of that. And it actually hung above my door for a long time because I wanted to be reminded of what's waiting out there. Not what's waiting out there Within, um, within animals or in the dark, but they're, speaking of which, there are actually wolves that live outside my door here in Montana. And um, I've actually seen them. I just saw one. I, one came up on me just outside the door once. Um, it's almost too incredible a story to tell, and I don't tell it because people won't believe me. It's like, yeah, right. Wolf ran up to you in your backyard when you're out having fire? Right, sure. It's like, yeah, um, it actually happened. So anyway... But uh, kind of a half the face is in the dark and still shadowed. And then the other half is just lit up with that one golden eye and snarling at you out, the, out of the darkness. And I really like this concept because it was all about the werewolf story that I'm writing is all about the, the conflict between the human side and the animal side and these, these instincts and how they, they play against each other and what wins over in the end. And um, very interesting uh, discussing human civilization, um, how the human mind individually reacts to it. If we can finally, once again, return to that animal state and go feral. <laughs> uh, so uh, essentially I do research for my, uh, my writing. And um, I spent an entire uh, winter down in Georgia losing my mind, um, trying to understand what it was like to return to the woods and become an animal again. I'm not joking, by the way. I'm not making this up. I'm not trying to hype anything up. This is actually kind of the tame version of what I've been doing. <laughs> anyway, all right. 
Uh, this is a, a sculpture. Now, this, 